Hello, 6th graders. Welcome to Big Ideas Math, Section 5.6, Solving Percent Problems, Lesson. Pause while you write Section 5.6 Lesson in your math notebook. Pause again while you write the lesson objective. Today's objective is use multiplication to find the percent of a number and division to find the whole, given the part and the percent. Today we'll be starting on page 226 in your math textbook. The first thing you need to do is copy the key idea from the top of the page. Finding the percent of a number. We write the percent as a fraction and then we multiply by the whole. The percent times the whole equals the part. So in numbers that looks like this example. 20% of 60 is 12. So 20% can be written as a fraction, one-fifth. Remember that of is times, and 60 is the whole number, and that equals 12. So here's a model to show you how that looks. Now let's start on example one. Finding the percent of a number. So 25% of 40 is what number? 25% of 40 equals 1 fourth, so when you change 25% to a fraction, it's 1 fourth, and we multiply that times 40. So 1 fourth times 40, we, we divide out the common factor, so that's the cross-canceling, and when we do that, we end up with 10. So 25% of 40 equals 10. And Here's our model to show you how that looks. It says you can also use a ratio table to find the percent of a number. And we'll do that in just a second, but let's check out our study tip first. You can use mental math to check your answer. In example 1, 10% of 40 equals 4, and 5% of 40 equals 2, because that's half of 10%. So 25% of 40 is 4 plus 4, plus 2, which equals 10. So let's move on to example 2 where we use the ratio table. 60% of 150 is what number? So we'll use a ratio table to find the part. Let one row be the part and let the other be the whole. And we'll find an equivalent ratio with 150 as the whole. So let's look at the blue box over here. It says the first column represents the percent. So we remember that part to whole is what our fraction is. So 60 out of 100 equals 60 percent. So that's why the 60 is on the top and the 100 is on the bottom. And our problem makes it so that we eventually want to get to something with 150 as the denominator so because it asks us 60% of 150 is what number so we need we can't get directly from 100 to 150 so we have to kind of go backwards a little bit first so we first divide our bottom and our top rows by 2 to get to 50. So 100 divided by 50, I'm sorry, divided by 2 equals 50, and 60 divided by 2 equals 30. So we have 30 fiftieths in the second column. And then we multiply by 3 because 50 times 3 equals 150. And then if we do that to the bottom, we have to do it to the top, and 30 times 3 equals 90. So 90 150ths. So we know that 60% of 150 equals 90. Now we're moving on to page 227, and at the top of that page we have a new key idea to write in your notes, so please copy this down. It says you can use a related division equation to find the whole when you're given the part and the percent. 
So finding the whole, we write the percent as a fraction, then we divide the part by the fraction. So the part divided by the percent equals the whole. So 20% again is 1 -fifth of 60 is 12. So we write the numbers again. Be sure you write the example. So 12 divided by 1 -fifth equals 60. So this is the same equation you had on the last page, only we've flipped it around so it's now division. So it's the same equation, only we've changed it around so it's division. So be sure you write this whole thing that's in this little box into your notes. And now let's look at example 3, finding the whole. 75% of what number is 48? So 48 divided by 75% equals 48 divided by 3 fourths. So we wrote the percent as a fraction and we divided. So 48 times 4 thirds, because we multiplied by the reciprocal, and then we simplify and we get 64. So 75 percent of 64 is 48. Example 4, we're going to find the whole using a ratio table. 120% of what number is 72? We use a ratio table to find the whole, and we find an equivalent ratio with 72 as the part. So the first column is the part and the whole, 120 over 100, and we can't get directly from 100 to 60, so we go from 100 to 5, and we divide by 20. So we divide the numerator and the denominator by 20. So we end up with 6 fifths, or 6 over 5 in our next column. And then we're going to multiply by 12 because that will get us to 60 on the bottom, which is what we want. And 72 on the top. So 120% of 60 is 72. Moving on to example 5, we have our real-life application. The width of a rectangular room is 80% of its length. What is the area of the room? So we need to find 80% of 15 feet. So we change our percent to a fraction. 80% of 15 equals 4 fifths times 15 and we do some cross canceling and we end up with a width of 12 feet. So then we use the formula for the area of a rectangle. Area is length times width so 15 times 12 equals 180 square feet. And example six, another real life application. You win an online auction for concert tickets. Your winning bid is 60% of your maximum bid. How much more were you willing to pay for the tickets than you actually paid? So it says that your winning bid was $125, and that's kind of hard to see on here, so I will write it. And it says your maximum bid is the whole, and your winning bid is the part. So whole and part. Find your maximum bid by dividing the part by the percent. So 120, that's the part, divided by 60 equals 120 divided by 3 fifths. Divide the part by the percent. So 120 times 5 thirds, multiplying by the reciprocal, because that's how we divide fractions, equals 200. So 
our maximum bid, what we were willing to pay, was $200, and our winning bid was $120. So we were willing to pay $200 minus $120, so $80 more for the tickets than what we actually paid. So the correct answer was B. Your assignment for this lesson is to complete the On Your Own problems below. They are also located on pages 226 to 228 of your textbook. Be sure to show your work and be prepared to share during our next class. Please remember to earn credit for viewing this flipped lesson. You need to complete your exit slip back at the website. You also need to come to our next class prepared with the journal pages that we did during the flipped lesson or any other work that we did for the flipped lesson completed. You also need to be prepared with any work that was assigned in the flipped lesson completed and be ready with any questions you have for your teacher and as always have a good attitude. We'll see you tomorrow in class. Remember to earn credit for viewing this flipped lesson. You must complete your exit slip you must come to our next class prepared with your journal pages or any other work that we did during the flipped lesson completed, and you need to be prepared with any work that was assigned during the flipped lesson completed. Be prepared with any questions you have about the content of the flipped lesson and a good attitude. We'll see you in class tomorrow.